NBC10 continues our commitment to cover climate change and the impacts we're feeling right here in our own neighborhoods. Now, our focus turns to water and we begin with flooding. Lately, we've seen our share of flood events across the region, parts of our towns underwater. We went to one of the hardest hit areas that have seen most recent floods and talked to a group that's doing work to stop it. This flood destroyed everything. I need new baseboard heaters, everything. Everything has to be replaced. Anthony Putnick has a long road ahead as he works to clean up his South Jersey home. Much of his neighborhood was flooded in June when nearby creeks overran their banks. Yeah, this is terrible. Putnick's lived in the area for 22 years and has noticed more rain. He fears this may not be his last big cleanup. The whole thing in a nutshell is if it's going to keep raining, I'm going to get flooded. According to a study by Climate Central, an independent group that analyzes climate data, extreme rain events won't be stopping. In fact, they're getting worse. Nationally, the average number of one inch, two inch and three inch rainfall events have all increased since 1950. The average number of three inch rainfall days in particular have increased by nearly 40%. And in our warmer world, this problem will only grow. Warmer air is capable of evaporating and holding more water. A one degree increase in our climate translates into roughly 4% more water vapor in our air. The more water in our air, the heavier the downpours. If we just sit around and do nothing, um, we know what's going to happen. At Stroud Water Research Center in Chester County, scientists are developing simple solutions to combat the intense rainfall events and impending flooding. We hope to see a significant reduction in the flood magnitudes. Oh, Research scientist okay. Melinda Daniels okay. says they want to counter floodwaters upstream before they swell larger creeks and rivers in populated areas. One option they're studying infiltration ditches. These are built to basically capture almost all of the runoff that comes off of its field. The large holes dug into the ground capture stormwater runoff. They're positioned downhill of fields and ahead of streams. Stores the water and lets it slowly infiltrate back into the ground after the storm's over. And that water then never becomes part of a flood at all. Stroud's also researching cover cropping, the method of planting a secondary crop on agricultural fields instead of leaving the field empty between growing seasons. That's uh, sort of a dangerous situation in terms of flood potential because there's nothing there to soak up the water. They're closely researching the impacts of these and other efforts against flooding. So far, they've seen positive results. The flood seems to be smaller than it used to be, and that makes sense because we've really dramatically increased the flood storage. In the future, she hopes their practices can become commonplace across the Delaware Valley. For homeowners like Putnick, it's okay. any options it's okay. to save his home are worthwhile. If they don't do something for us, we're all just going to keep getting flooded. And eventually, we're all just going to have to up and leave. Stroud isn't just working on how to reduce flooding. They're also looking into how their work can actually help to purify storm water before it gets into our creeks and streams. And that means limiting the number of pollutants that get into our drinking sources. That's something that water companies like. And that brings us to the topic of water quality and how climate change is impacting it. Like many of us, not much, nothing. These parents don't know too much about climate change. That's just, you know, the furthest thing from my mind. But they do know that water is important. I drink it every day. We drink it. Um, I use it to bathe. As our climate turns hotter and more rainy, the quality of the water we rely on daily, whether for drinking, cooking, washing dishes and clothes, or just for fun, is at risk. We supply 1.65 million people with drinking water every day. Kelly Anderson is the Philadelphia Water Department Water Resources Manager. She says the city monitors and tests its water regularly for signs of climate change related problems. One concern, warmer temperatures triggering warmer water. When river temperatures rise and the temperature becomes elevated, we often see algae blooms upstream. Currently, they're still able to handle heat related water contaminants. We have not gotten to a point yet where we've had to change any of our treatment processes, but it is something that we have a like a team of engineers looking at. Another issue, tracking the impacts of rising sea levels on our water sources, the Schuylkill and Delaware rivers. As the salt line moves up, it brings water characteristics that we're not used to dealing with in Philadelphia and treatings. Something Anderson says could make water treatment more expensive in the future. But the biggest battle today, handling floods on an aging sewage system.
According to Climate Central, our heaviest rainfall events are increasing by about 55 percent in the mid-Atlantic, and our average annual rainfall has increased by four to six inches in Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey since 1950. It's during those heaviest and more frequent events, combined stormwater and sewage systems can be overwhelmed, forcing wastewater to overflow and mix into our rivers, our drinking supply. And we've seen a lot of one in 100 year events occurring back to back. Howard Newkrug uh, is the executive is director of the Water we're Center we're at Penn. He says know, there's two ways the to adapt. One is the old way of just continuing to build more and more capacity underground and the other way is to start changing how you manage your land. It's the latter that Newkrug says has promise in our concrete and asphalt filled city. Concrete and asphalt don't allow stormwaters to absorb into the ground, making flooding and more wastewater overflow more likely. And the solutions to water is really nature. It's really about the environment. It's about bringing nature back to your city. The idea is to turn open space at ground level and atop buildings into grassy tree covered space. Green space absorbs, stores and filters water instead of adding it to a flood. We have over 100 engineers and scientists right now trying to diagnose and really figure out the best technologies to prevent any wastewater from getting into our rivers and streams. All in an effort for Philly water to become more resilient to the challenges of climate change, something that has these parents thinking of the future. You know, she's only four, so she's got her whole life to live. Because of my health, and my kids' health, it's just I should be able to trust the water that I'm drinking out my sink. The Philadelphia Water Department is in year eight of a 25 year plan to bring more green space to our city. They'll couple that with more large scale pipe projects. Now you've just seen how flooding and water quality are impacted by climate change, but the most visual evidence comes with ghosts for us. Take a look. If you want to see what climate change looks like, let's go for a walk. This marshy, muddy wetlands leads us to a stunning image. This was a big forest, a tall forest with very old trees. This once vibrant living forest, dead. There remains memories of a time when the ocean was held at bay. The executive director of the Wetlands Institute, Lenore Tedesco, tells us the trees near Jake's Landing in Cape May County, New Jersey, can't handle the infringing salt water. As the salt comes in, it poisons. It poisons things, it floods the soils and saturates and it kills these forests. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's measurements, sea levels in Atlantic City, New Jersey, since 1911 have risen nearly one and a half feet and about six inches since the 1980s. A change like that is a big is a big change. According to Climate Central, 2019 is on track to be the third hottest year globally. The top five hottest years since 1880 have been the last five years. Warmer temperatures cause water to expand. The warmer water also melts glaciers and ice sheets. Combined, you get rising sea levels. This died because of sea level rise. And it's not stopping. See this line of living forest? As sea level continues to rise, those could be next. Oh, those are definitely next. This is just, it's moving that way. And it's not just in the middle of this marsh. You can find ghost forests along the East Coast, down in Florida. There's dead trees all there. And, and in Hans Axelson's in Villa's yard. New Jersey backyard. The salt is encroaching more and more. It's not just the trees Axelson and his neighbors are worried about. Uh, I have significant amounts of sand, iron, salt. Um, all kinds of stuff in my well. The sea level rise has contaminated their drinking water supply. That was a clear tube and that's coming through two sets of filters that still stained that tube that color. He filters his water so he can use it, but expects more and more salt to show up. It tastes good, but it takes a lot of filtration to do it. He likes his township's plan to provide water to his and other area communities. That's going to come with a cost, but. Just a regular plain old high tide, this will be water. He also hopes and they come I, up with a plan to slow the rising sea level. Are you worried at some point you'll have to leave? That, that, that it, I, it does, it does. It is a big thing on my mind. This is falling apart. Back in the ghost forest, this marsh is showing signs of giving way. New Jersey officials say about one acre of the Delaware Bay marsh is lost each day due to climate change, removing a natural flood barrier. An acre of marsh can store about a million gallons of water. You start taking those away, that water's going somewhere. Tedesco says that somewhere is our shore communities where more flooding is likely. Think of Superstorm Sandy. She says those areas that have the healthiest marsh during that time had the least flooding. I'm Crystal Clyde for NBC 10 News.